You mentioned earlier your father passed away. Yeah. I know you were very close with him and he taught you a lot over the years, gave you a, some good advice. You were also like he had you much later in life. Could you tell us anything about your father for the people that might be from the U.S. that aren't familiar with the promotion um, up there? Well, let's see. He started wrestling in 1955 or 56. Um he got trained up here on the beach by a bunch of local shooters. Uh, he did a local show and there just so happened to be a promoter from Boston who was in the area looking for, you know, looking for talent, basically looking for cheap talent because he was an American promoter looking for cheap Canadian talent. Right. And then my dad was a really good looking guy, you know, um, had a really good looking physique. So as soon as the promoter saw him, he saw money so he's the promoter told him the promoter's name was tony santos it's uh he ran an outfit out of boston the same american territory where pat patterson broke into so um the difference between pat and my dad is that pat had a family to buy him a greyhound bus ticket my father had no family so he had to hitchhike um so that's where he got his start and um you know sometimes he wrestled for a hot dog and a coke sometimes he got 15 bucks if he was lucky and uh he uh, definitely paid his dues the hard way saved every dime he ever got uh and then he quickly realized that uh if you want to make the big money in wrestling promoting was where it's at so he came to his hometown his home area of the maritimes and uh, started promoting as well as wrestling. Um, he would spend his winters down south in the United States working for various promoters such as Vince McMahon Sr., such as Jim Crockett Sr., such as, um, you know, Vern Gagne, Old, old Man Funk Sr., um, you know, all the old school, um, 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 Jim Barnett, my boy, you know, he did several tours of Australia for Jim Barnett and, uh, Johnny Doyle, who was, uh, Jim Barnett's business partner. And, uh, you know, he started, um, when he come back home, eventually, you know, he worked for local promoters, but then eventually took over the book. He took over the promotion in the sixties. And in the 1970, I believe 77 or 78, he teamed up with, uh, Angelo Poffo, who is the father of the Macho Man, Randy Savage and Leaping Lanny Poffo. And, uh, uh Angelo Poffo, helped him learn the television aspect of the thing and that's when he started his own his own television show he always had good relationships well that's the way it worked back then Devin. you know all the promoters worked together before vince jr came along and wanted to monopolize everything promoters worked together my father had a good relationship with Stu hart and uh he would get the tapes from stampede and air them out here on the east coast and they would trade talent you know and my dad broke in guys like um, Don Jardine, the original spoiler. So a lot of people who may not know who that is, well, you know who the Undertaker is. You know what the old school is where he walks the top rope. Well, that's the guy who invented it. And you know where the old school was created? It was created in my backyard. Um, a lot of Undertaker's mannerisms were copied by Don Jardine. And if you ask any old school guy from Steve Austin to Jake Roberts to Stan Hansen, just how influenced Don Jardine, influential John Jardine was uh, to the Texas wrestling scene from guys like Hansen to Brody to Taker to Austin, you name it. I remember when I was doing the, the interview with J.J. Dillon, at one point he was coming in as part of the opposition to your yeah. father and it didn't yeah. end up working out they ended up going out of business what yeah. was that all about and what do you think about um, yeah they found a money mark surprise surprise a money mark in wrestling and uh but the thing is my father was local so he had a lot of local friends that had local connections he was good friends with the irvings uh casey irving who was a big wrestling fan had a cottage right next uh to my father's home you know by the bluff here right by the parley beach so they would come over for dinner all the time and you know my father had connections with the the main guy with the newspaper you know back then if you had friends with 
if you're friends with the Irvings and you're friends with the the top guy with the top newspaper and top guy with the the television, they had that we had the better television, we had the better connections financially, the better sponsors, and uh, it just worked out in his favor. You know what I mean? And my father was a very giving guy because you know how much he 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 uh, charged guys to train. Nothing. Zero. Not a goddamn dime. And a lot of those same people would turn around and stab him in the back.